If the St. Louis Cardinals are going to be sellers at this year's deadline, could the New York Mets make a move on Nolan Arenado? I'll discuss a crazy trade idea that just might work on today's edition of Locked on Mets. You are Locked on Mets, your daily New York Mets podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all you uh, amazing Mets fans. You're watching Locked On Mets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Ryan Finkelstein. Or to find my work, follow me on Twitter at Finkelstein Ryan. You can also find some of my writing at JustBaseball.com, where I work as the managing editor. Now, I know for some of you who were listening to the show throughout the week, I did promise a Friday Farm Report breaking down the Mets draft, but I want to have an expert on with me when I discuss the draft. So we're going to do that at a later time. And we're still at the process where the Mets are signing their draft picks. So more news can come out with who actually is going to stick from the draft. And so I just want to make sure that when I cover the draft, I cover it very thoroughly. This leads me into the topic of the day, which is more of a fun one, more of a zany off season trade deadline type topic, but one that I think is relevant because the Cardinals have come out and said, they're going to be sellers this year. Okay. John Mosellock, their GM went on a uh, you know local radio show on was it 590 the fan I pulled that here uh, yeah 590 the fan with Martin Kilcoin and here were some of his comments he said quote I just don't know if it's going to be household names or just guys that aren't likely to be here next year but we're not going to just be giving away players we want to get some value in their turn but they are going to trade guys he said he said when you look at how things have unfolded. I don't want to go through every little excuse we see. We know it hasn't worked. We know changes have to happen. So this is a Cardinals team that can be an active seller in this market. And I think in the context of trading for Nolan Arenado, you have to understand that this is not a team that is looking to go back at any point in time. Okay, They are always a win-now team, but they're also at a point where they have to come to realization that this probably isn't their year, and they can take advantage of, of a seller's market. Likely that means building around their two best players, Nolan Arenado and Paul Goldschmidt, and trading some of these other guys, trading, of course, Jordan Hicks, a rental reliever, trading guys that maybe don't fit anymore, like Tyler O'Neill and Dylan Carlson, or I mean, you know, more relievers and Giovanni Gallegos. I mean, there's pieces that they can probably shift around and move and get good value for, even trading someone like Tommy Edmond and maybe selling. 125 cents on the dollar for a player that is a utility guy that has been more than that the last couple of years. And maybe in a weak market, when it comes to position player talent, you can get a lot back in return. Trading Nolan Arenado is probably not something that the Cardinals are going to be entertaining yet. Nolan Arenado himself has admitted that he doesn't know what's going to happen. And there is every chance that he's included in this sell-off. And I think the right trade would have to be offered to them to open that door. And here is where I think this would get interesting. In the next segment, we'll talk a little bit more about return. But it's the money aspect to it. And and look, you still have to remember the Cardinals are a small market team. They are going to try to have themselves set up to to best contend, not just this year, into the future. And Nolan Arenado's contract is one that you would want to to continue to build around. He opted into that deal, and and that is a a great value contract. They have him under the books for five years at an affordable deal at this point. And you you look at the next couple of years, he's expensive, $35 million this year, $35 million next year, but then it drops down to $32 million in 2025 and 27 in 2026, and all the way down to $15 million in, in 2027. So, Ultimately, that's a value contract that keeps him through his age 36 season. The reason why the Cardinals would consider moving him is because, for one, if you have an owner and it's a lost year and you can tell him, oh, we can save $20 million on your books in a lost season right now this year that you can just put in your pocket, that is of value to the owner if you're also getting a commensurate prospect return and if 
you have coverage at that position moving forward. The Cardinals, they have Brendan Donovan. They have Nolan Gorman. They have Jordan Walker. used to play third base in the minor leagues. They have a lot of options where they could say, all right, we can fill that hole at third base and we can take the money we free up with Nolan Arenado and Steven Matz, which is the big kicker in this trade I'm going to propose here. If we can free up that much financial flexibility in the future, ultimately we're going to be better in 2024 through 2027 than if we had Nolan Arenado in our roster. And that requires a package that's really good and requires you being smart with the money you would save on both Arenado and Steven Matz's contract. But if you just look at the next two years, Arenado's owed 70 or let's say 67 million, excuse me. Matz is owed about 25 million for the next two years, 12 and a half each of the next two seasons. So if you can get off of Matz's horrible contract and then you're also paving the way to spend in different areas beyond this season, let's just say the Cardinals want to make a run at signing a starting pitcher. Well, now you can allocate resources at a position of depth that you have at third base. Granted, you'd be going from the best third baseman in baseball to something less than that. But you could allocate all that money into a different player. That is where this trade would make sense for the Cardinals if they got a hefty prospect return and they got off some money that they just don't want on their books. And really the players that I could see that would fall into that category it would be Steven Matz, of course, because that's, in their eyes, pretty much dead money, a guy that has a middle of stick in their rotation. And then there's Wilson Contreras, who's got the longer money deal, one that I don't think the Mets would be interested in, although you can never count Steve Cohen out when it comes to trying to get stars. So would you take on a ton of money just to get that one star at third base and then figure out where you still stick Contreras on the team that already had Alvarez. I don't think that's likely. So the trade I'm going to propose is more focused on Arenado and Mats. And here's the deal if you're the Mets and why you would push a heavy prospect, uh, you know, capital into this type of a trade. It's taking the unknown of some prospects who could fill in at third base and getting the best in the game at the position. It's very much like the trade to get Francisco Lindor, where, hey, you think you might have something in Andres Jimenez, a Matt Rosario you've seen, and he's a major league player, but maybe not an above average one. So, hey, we're going to cash these in. We're going to cash them lottery tickets down the road, and we're going to get the sure thing that we're going to have to pay a hefty salary, which is the other part of that. The reason why the then Indians, now Guardians, traded Francisco Lindor is because they knew they weren't going to pay him. In this case, the Cardinals can pay Arenado, but they also could plug Jordan Walker back into third base if they really wanted to and get way cheaper at that position, have the same offensive value. And then, yes, the defense is down, but maybe you are, are able to make the rest of your team make sense in those places where juggling their roster around, that would be a route they would choose to go. The way that this happens, though, is they get a third-base prospect they believe in. And this is where you would look at a Brett Beatty for Nolan Arenado trade and say, Maybe there is a little bit of legs to that idea. And that's what I want to discuss next, what a trade could look like, why the Cardinals would consider it, and if the Mets would be mortgaging their future more for a lost season, essentially, to get a piece to try to move over the top this year, or if just the future of building around an Arenado Lindor side of the infield is good enough that you are willing to trade the farm in this case to acquire that type of player and even take on a bad salary with him. I want to discuss what the deal is, uh, particularly that I'm looking at in just a minute. Before we do, today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay's guaranteed fit, you can be sure that every part you need fits right the first time around. You just add your ride to my garage, look for the green check to know that the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. 
eBay's guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. The New York Mets put the Los Angeles Dodgers at 710 Eastern Time tonight. Catch every pitch in the Mets' hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search Mets. Now, uh, admittedly, the idea of making this trade is one where you're <laughs> pulling for the interests of your favorite team and thinking, hey, how do you get a star in here? And, and it's tough to really measure proper value in those trades because if it's a trade that doesn't hurt you, it probably isn't a good one. So when I came up with this offer, I felt like it was one that would hurt the Mets. I felt like it's one where in three years you could look back and say you made a mistake. And so that was my starting point. Yet, I also understand that it's easy to be biased in these situations. So I texted some of my friends who cover baseball who don't have a rooting interest in this and just said, hey, who says no? Mets trade Brett Beatty and Mark Vientos for Nolan Arenado and Steven Matz. Everyone screamed back the Cardinals say no. So maybe you have to throw an arm into this deal to make it work. But I, I want to begin with the general framework. Why the Mets would consider this, why the Cardinals would. And I already alluded to it from the Cardinals' perspective. It's getting off Matz's money. It's having other players that can fill in at third base. A and the, the aggregate money that you're saving this year, which the owner is going to love in a lost year, and how you can then reinvest it on the team next year to make yourself better in 2024. It's tough to be better than building around two players as good as Nolan Arenado and Paul Goldschmidt, though. So that's the give and take. So it all comes down to how much would they value a prospect like Brett Beatty. And from a Mets perspective, I'm sure these are the conversations that are going on in that front office. When you hear the Cardinals are, are sellers, if you're debating trading players of the prospect capital that Brett Beatty still possesses, even with a slow start to his big league career, you're shooting for the stars first before you're, you're, you're leveling somewhere in the middle. I do think that in the Mets' eyes, I believe they value Beatty the player enough that they are just going to trust that he's going to figure out that third base position. And when they talk about wanting to build around you know, their young players and not spend astronomically forever and at some point be able to come back down to earth a little bit with a, a better player development program, that would go against the grain because you could have the guy that could be, uh, you know, an above average starter at the position cheap for a better part of the next decade here. Or you could go to someone who's making money at the top of the market. But I think the Mets are hungry enough for another star that they would consider giving up some prospect capital if they get that type of a player in return. And to soften the prospect capital you have to give up in that type of a trade you take Steven Matt's money back. Now, from a Cardinals perspective, you could say, if we're going to trade Arenado, let's just trade him without the Steven Matt's anchor, get as much value as we can back. There's a lot of schools of thought on that type of you know, roster construction. What's the best way to pivot and build the best team in 2024? So this is working under the assumption that the value of getting off of Matt's contract is a blue chip prospect to them in of itself, that, that that's a piece that they would be getting back by not having to pay Stephen Matt the next couple of years, right? Then it's how much do they value Brett Beatty and Mark Vientos? And, and the reason why I throw Vientos in the deal is because these are the guys that I think the Mets would be most comfortable trading. I, I think Vientos in particular. I think Beatty's the piece that hurts to give up and Vientos is the piece that, Still holds some value, but I think the Mets will be willing to move. It's, again, similar to the Lindor trade of Andres Jimenez being the piece that you don't really want to move, although I think Brett Beatty uh, is a player that, despite Jimenez's season last year, certainly when it comes to top 100 prospect rankings and everything else, he's a more high-valued player than Jimenez was then. But I digress on that comparison. Then you had the Rosario Vientos thing, and I think, Rosario still ha had shown more at the MLB level. You could stick. Meanwhile, you can dream a little more on Vientos's ceiling as a you know, potential guy that could hit a lot of home runs at the big league level. So it depends on how the Cardinals feel about those two players. But let's just throw Vientos off of it. Let's just say instead, it's just simply Brett Beatty and then pick your two prospects. The Cardinals pick two other prospects from your farm system. Who would you not trade in that type of a deal? 
Maybe it's Jet Williams that you wouldn't trade. Maybe it's Blade Tidwell that you wouldn't trade. The two guys you got last year in the first round. Maybe it's Kevin Parada you wouldn't trade, or maybe you would trade Kevin Parada in that type of a scenario. Maybe it's Beatty and Prada. And then are you giving up too much prospect capital on a lost season? This is where the Mets are in a really tough spot, where I, I think the smart teams in baseball are going to do what the Cardinals are doing. And it's not to say them trading on Arenado. It's canvassing the market this year, canvassing the playoff race, and realizing that pushing your chips in for this season is probably not wise. And selling the pieces you can for 125 cents on the dollar is the best thing. We talked about that yesterday with the Padres and the Mets um, and how the Padres are in position to be that team. I don't think they're smart enough to. I think the Cardinals are. And I think they're going to be trading all the guys that are rentals and a couple years left that aren't clearly part of their plans. And so because of where I think the Cardinals are going to go, Arenado is likely more a piece they want to build around. But if there is a chance that he does hit that market and they are fielding calls, being able to get off Steven Matz is something that most teams aren't going to afford them that opportunity to pick up Aaron now. There's not a lot of teams that say, hey, give me that $25 million of potentially dead money the next two years on a pitcher. That might not be able to stick. It might be DFA at some point. The Mets would do that. And because they would do that, that could give him the leg up where if the Cardinals were to value a prospect like Brett Beatty, or maybe it's Ronnie Mauricio, and they, for whatever reason, love said prospect, well, then you can start to make headway on actually completing a deal. So my whole reason for today's show is just to point out that that's the type of blockbuster that could happen that would really bring shock and awe to Mets fans at this deadline. and more likely. It's the trade that I proposed a week or two ago where it's the Mets taking Matt's back for like Jordan Hicks and they're just eating money to acquire a player. And if from a, from a Cardinals perspective to, to get off of Matt's money for a rental and he potentially get nothing back for that, just to give up Hicks to get off Matt's that's probably more attractive, but because the Cardinals are, are selling right now, they're just a team that is interesting to look at and of the pieces that they could potentially sell. The idea of being able to pair two gold glovers on the left side of the Mets infield, that is so tantalizing and that that puts you into a better position to win for the next five years that I think it's one where the Mets might actually dip into that well of prospects that we've heard they're pretty much unwilling to deal at this deadline and rightfully so. Anyway, just a fun trade. Uh, that's going to be all for the Arenado talk. I want to switch gears back to this season and look at this run heading up into the deadline, who the Mets are going to face this weekend in the Dodgers. We'll preview that. And, and just what is ahead of them as they try to make the case to not be sellers themselves. Before we get to that, though, today's episode is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs are the most comfortable shorts ever. Uh, you know, the, the best part about bird dogs is the fit because I look better and feel better in bird dogs than in any other shorts that I own. My basketball shorts, a little bit casual, right? They're a little bit too middle school. Maybe you'd say, And but Hey, I, I used to always wear basketball shorts because I'm a comfort over look guy. I'll be honest. That's how I am. So the nice khaki shorts that I own wasn't really wearing them unless I was going to a golf course, a little more strict on the dress code or you know, I just didn't want to embarrass my wife out to dinner. Maybe I'd throw those khakis on. Now, I got khaki bird dogs. So I get the best of both worlds. I get the, the comfort, the feel that I like, and the look that my wife enjoys or other people, when they look at me, they say, oh, that's a man, not a boy. So this is why I'm a fan of bird dogs. If you want to try the versatile shorts today, you can go to birddogs.com slash locked on MLB and use the promo code locked on MLB and they'll throw in a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti-style tumbler with every order. Again, go to birddogs.com slash LockedOnMLB, use the promo code LockedOnMLB, and get your free custom Bird Dogs Yeti-style tumbler today. The New York Mets are set to play the Los Angeles Dodgers Friday night at 710 Eastern. Catch every pitch in the Mets' hometown broadcast from SiriusXM on the SXM app. 
Just search Mets. Mets Dodgers to open yourself up out of the break. Not necessarily the draw you're looking for when you're trying to get back in the mix. And the Dodgers are sitting at 51 and 38, and they're clearly a much better team. Not, not, not the the first draw you want, but let's look at the overall scope of the schedule before we get back to previewing this upcoming series. Dodgers for three at home. White Sox for three at home. You feel better about the second series and then homestand. So at least you have a six-game homestand. You have an off day on Monday. Try to get yourself back into the swing of things before you hit the road. Then it's three in Fenway, a day off, and it's two against the Yankees in Yankee Stadium. That'll be a little bit tougher, although right now the Yankees are a little bit down and out themselves. Then beyond that, you've got a four-game set against the Nationals at home. And that leads you into the trade deadline. So it's four games that you theoretically should win when you get that far. So I look at this schedule. And I say, all right, if you win the first series, if you just get off to a good start over the weekend, could the ball start rolling? Could you win the second series against the White Sox? Let's just say you make it through the homestand. You win four of six. All right, you're moving in the right direction. You got five games against the Red Sox and the Yankees. So you win three of those, right? I love when we play count the schedule of wins and losses, but this is just an exercise. All right. So four plus three, you got seven wins, four losses. Then you got the Nationals. Let's say you take three of those games. That brings you to 10 and five. The Mets went 10 and five leading into the break. They would go or not into the break, excuse me, to the deadline. They would go into that trade deadline sitting at 52 and 53, one game under. How much are you in the race if all that happens? You're five games back, you're four games back. And that would be a great run of success for the Mets. That would be winning, you know, if you go back to the schedule there, winning two, three maybe four or five series leading into the break, which the Mets have given us no evidence that they can do that. So it's just, it's a interesting stretch for this Mets team. And who knows? They won six in a row just recently. Maybe they shock us. Maybe they, they have another six game winning streak in them. And maybe they don't lose a series until the deadline. And if that's the case, if they can sweep a couple series at some point, well, there you go. That opens the door, but they're going to have to play out of their minds over the next couple of weeks to make this really interesting at the deadline where the Mets are buying. I think it's more likely that this is a team that's eating salary without giving up prospects. So it's like the Mats and Hicks trades, things like that, where maybe you get an arm for your bullpen, but you stand pat. Maybe you make a couple of those trades and you flip a Tommy fam. I, I, those are the, I, I could see them being both ways at it. So it, it's, an interesting stretch we're about to enter into. And it starts off with the age old question. Are you going to get a good version of Justin Verlander and Max Scherzer? Because both of them are going to pitch in this series against the Dodgers. And with that, you would hope you can win a series. That's the whole reason you bring them together. So that when you need to win a series, you have two games that you should win. And there's every chance because Kodai Senga didn't pitch in the all-star game that he'll pitch the third game in this series right now. What they've announced is Verlander versus, uh, versus Julio Urias in the first game, uh, TBD, TBD, second game, TBD, Max Scherzer, third game. So we don't know. But I would imagine that it's going to be Verlander, Senga, Scherzer. That's the way that they're they're planning to shape it up. Um, I think that that's the case. And, yes, the Mets could win all three of those games. And if they're able to do that and they're able to start to get a rhythm, yes, they can get back into this mix. But – the, the more and more times that you say, oh, this is what should happen, and then Max Scherzer gives up three home runs, you start to come back to the conclusion that this team might just be in the midst of a lost season. So they got 15 games to prove it before the deadline. We'll see what they do. We'll see what they do. Anyway, that's going to be all for today's edition of Locked on Mets. Make sure you follow, rate, and review wherever you get your podcast. Follow me on Twitter at Finkelstein Ryan. Follow the show, Locked On Mets. And if you want to catch every pitch of the Mets' hometown broadcast, you can do so with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Mets.